Hey everybody, it's Gomit X bringing you another M19 draft report. This week I went black white with a life gain sub theme. This was mainly just black white good stuff. A lot of good little creatures, couple bombs. Uh, well, mainly just one bomb, just the graveyard marshal. But Regal Bloodlord I think would classify as a bomb as well. Uh, and a lot of removal. So the way the draft itself went, I first picked a graveyard marshal, followed it up with a murder, and then. Uh, black seemed relatively open for the rest of that pack. I'm assuming because my opponent uh, passed me a murder that they wanted me to jump onto black, and I'm pretty sure I was correct with that because then I kept getting uh, blood letters in that pack, and I got a Lich's Caress in that pack as well. Uh, the second pack is when I moved into white. I was seeing some cards like uh, Gallant Cavalries go incredibly late. Star Crown Stag was like sixth pick or something. Not actually that great in this deck, but... Still, I didn't want to send the message for other people to draft white if I was going to hop into it. Um, yeah, and that's where I got a Luminous Bonds pretty late. And then the final pack is where I shirt up the deck, made sure it was, like, very good, <laughs> in my opinion. That's where I got Regal Bloodlord, Aromancer's Cage, the second Lich's Caress. I believe I first picked a Liliana's Contract, just to give me another kind of balmy card. Uh, so yeah, I ended up going 3-0. The first match, I played against another black-white deck. Uh, we do cross-table pairings, which is when you play against the person that is the farthest away from the table as you. So we were the only black-white drafters, and it makes sense that we were, <laughs> like, directly across from each other. Um, so yeah, it was a mirror match, so the way that I won that match, basically, since we were just sitting there freaking gaining life and draining each other's life, nothing was really going to happen uh, on board because we had like zero threes and three threes and three twos just sitting there. Um, what really was going to happen was all of the flying creatures were what was important in that match. The Angel of the Dawn, Regal Bloodlord, and the three Sky March Bloodletters. So the game plan in that match was to land one of my flying creatures and then just keep swinging in. And if they played their own flying creature, either Abnormal Endurance mine into it, so they trade, but then mine comes back because of the Endurance, or just straight up remove their flyers so that I can get in there and actually someone will die in that match. So, uh, I did lose one game in that match. That was a game where I got mana screwed a little bit. Uh, I had to mulligan to six, and I kept a land with a Plains and a Swamp, and I believe a Diamond Mare and like an Abnormal Endurance were the only cards I could cast and then a bunch of uh, three mana cards, like the blood letters. Um, so yeah, I lost that game because I went playing Swamp, drew into a Graveyard Marshal, which was really awkward. I didn't have two Swamps to play him. Next turn, I drew another Plains, so then I got to drop Blood Letter out, but at that point, I'd already missed a few land drops, so they had a decent board. Uh, and then I drew a Murder after that, and I had two Plains and one Swamp, so I couldn't cast the Murder either. So... They inevitably got me in that match due to me only being able to cast, like, four spells all game. Um, or they got me in that game, not not the match. I, I 2 won them, but that was the game that I lost in the 2-1. Uh, match 2 was against a mono-red deck, a very cool mono-red deck, uh, and also a very terrifying mono-red deck. They had, like, four active trees and four lava acts, and a few or a couple uh, double cast. I don't really know how many. Uh, that was like the only deck I've ever seen Catalyst Elemental be really good in. Uh, Catalyst Elemental basically allowed them to uh, dome me for 10 on turn 5 consistently because that was basically their turn 5 every game was just sack my Catalyst Elemental to cast double cast, spend 5, lava axe you for 10. So yeah, that was a terrifying matchup. Uh, just because they could co so consistently do 10 to 20 just off of their Lava Axes. Double casting a Lava Axe followed by one more Lava Axe is 15 damage. So yeah, they their early game was a lot of Goblin Instigators, uh, Lightning Mares, just quick aggressive creatures, Bogart Brutes. And then their late game was just a pile of Active Treason and Lava Axe. Luckily for me, Active Treason, not that great against this deck. This deck has just a lot of uh, ground dudes. Um, 
it is really good if I get like one flyer out, they can active treason and hit me for two, but that's certainly not as great as just active treason like a Colossal Dreadmaw. Active treason's much better against green decks than my deck. So yeah, the best thing that they ever really got to active treason was to just steal a flyer, hit me for two or three. Uh, because if they stole any ground dude, it really wasn't going to change anything because I had just so many out at all times. Um, so yeah, that match, I did lose one game. Uh, they got me... They got me relatively low, and then just did their whole uh, Lava Axe shenanigans. I believe that was uh, game two. Uh, so, the way that I won that match um, should probably be pretty obvious, but it was all, with all the life gain stuff. Diamond Mare, uh, gaining a life whenever I cast a spell. Child of Night with the life link. Vampire Neonate with the life drain. Uh, Sky March Bloodletters steal a life from them when they come into play. So, it was a lot of cards like that. And then just early off with the Child of Knights, just aggressively keeping them on the board and aggressively attacking. So like, uh, swinging them with Child of Knight, and then if they block with anything, Abnormal Endurance, because I need to get as much lifelink value out of the Child of Knights as possible in that matchup. So, yeah, that was a, a fun match, a terrifying match, and they had a really cool deck, but uh, I managed to beat them out uh, eventually, just thanks to life gain keeping me at high enough total to not just die to a stack of Lava Axe. Um, and then the final match was versus Mono Green. Uh, that match also was pretty scary, but I think that my matchup was very, very good against that one. Uh, it was pretty good against the Mono Red, but their deck was so good, I was still consistently, like, winning the game at, like, 3 life. Um even after gaining a shit ton of life. Against Mono Green, that matchup was way better. Um, I didn't see a single Vine Mare. If they had Vine Mare, I would have been in, uh, in a big, big trouble. Um, simply because my entire game plan for that match was to just remove their giant fatties. The way their deck worked was giant creatures like Colossal Dreadmaw and Gigantosaur suiting them up with Oaken Forms or Talons of whatever, the thing that gives them Trample. Um, and, like, Blanchwood armor and stuff like that. So just making gigantic creatures. Luckily for me, spot removal is very good against auras. It's basically a two-for-one. Um, the only problem in that match, the only scary thing, was uh, a couple of times when I would Luminous Bonds or Aeromancer's Cage, they would just play a Reclamation Sage next turn, get their dude back, and just swing at me. So... That was pretty terrifying, but I managed to win that match 2-0, leading me to a 3-0 victory. So yeah, definitely a fun draft deck, definitely a good draft deck. Um, it doesn't have the most synergy, it's only got the one uh, lifelink payoff, but I'm not a huge fan of Epicure of Blood. Uh, I did see some, but I never drafted one. So yeah, the only lifelink payoff I really saw was the Regal Bloodlord, but that guy was very, very good anytime I got him out. Um, so yeah, that was my draft this week. Uh, I will see you all next time I make a draft or sealed report video, which will probably be the Guilds of Ravnica pre-release, where I am hoping, fingers crossed, to be playing Demir, but I don't know if I'll be able to pre-order in time to make sure that I get the guild I want, so I might just randomly be Boros, which I really hope not. Hopefully... People really like the Boros cards for Limited. Uh, I feel like Boros is insanely good in M19, so hopefully a bunch of people are like, oh, Boros is totally going to win the tournament. I just want Boros. All I hope is that Demir is not the most popular guild. That way I can get Demir even if I show up last second. <laughs> but we'll see when we come to that. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.